and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our stamp set Scripty Bubble Sentiments and its coordinating dies. And we're also going to be introducing our Bubble Stencil. Both of these products work great on their own and they also work great with our Bubbles of Joy stamp set that we introduced yesterday. So let's go ahead and check this stamp set out. This set has these cute bubbly words that are perfect as bubbles and on their own and we're going to be showing you both ways in this video. We have a happy, thanks, hugs, love, and smile. Then for each of these words, we have other little phrases that you could use with them or not. So here we have happy birthday to you. Then we have thanks, so very much. We have the word sending for sending hugs and sending love. And then we have you make me smile. This set also comes with its own little mouse. We have this cute little standing mouse who's a great companion to the other mice in Bubbles of Joy, or he's wonderful used on his own. He has a little bubble wand and then some other sizes of bubbles that are different than the bubbles in the Bubbles of Joy set. So once again, this is a great companion and you can mix and match these all together. I love that cute little popped bubble as well. Now we're going to use Copic markers to color in these cute images and I'm going to show you lots of different ways of coloring in these letters. This is the most simple way to make these letters look like a bubble. Take a blue green marker and just add a little bit of blue green on the inside edge of that black line randomly around the letter and then blend it out with a colorless blender. This is going to give you a really cool bubbly look very easily. Now if you want to step it up a little bit, we're going to add some extra colors in and I like adding a little light purple and light pink to give it an iridescent look. These are the lightest purples and pinks that I happen to have, so just pick out your lightest ones and add those randomly around the letters. I'm going to blend them out with a light blue green marker and then take an even lighter blue green marker and fill in the rest of my letters. This is going to give me a bubbly look but with kind of that iridescent shine, kind of like how we colored bubbles on Bubbles of Joy and I think it's a really, really cool look. For the next letters, I wanted the look of kind of an iridescent bubble, but with a rainbow kind of tinge to it. So I took out my lightest markers in rainbow order and I'm filling in my letters. I started off with blue in the center and then I worked my way in the rainbow in both directions from that blue so that I end up kind of having two full rainbows here on my letters. I'm just going out along the inside edges just like I did with that first happy and then I'm blending it all out with the colorless blender. That's going to give it a really nice and kind of ethereal look. I like that this has a bubbly look but could also be used not as a bubble as well. Here you can see one I did with the thanks word and I think that turned out so pretty. I like the rainbow effect even more on the longer words. For the next word, I'm going to color it in without thinking of a bubble. That's one of the things that I love about these sentiments is that it could just be a cute sentiment for your card. So in this case, I was inspired by the word love to do some pinks. So I'm doing kind of an ombre gradient style on my letters to create a nice bold sentiment, which I think is going to look amazing on a card. Once again, I love that they can be bubbles or not. For the last word, I wanted to take that rainbow idea that we did before, but make it a little bit more bold. So this case, I'm actually filling in the letters completely instead of just going along the inside edge of the black line. And you can see it's a bolder look. It kind of takes the whole bubble look out of it and makes it more like a bold sentiment for your cards. And I think it looks incredible. Next, I'm going to translate that rainbow iridescent bubble idea to one of the bubbles here. So I did that rainbow order and blended it out with my colorless blender. And then for the other bubbles, I'm going to do them in more of a traditional style with the pinks and the purples and my blue greens or just blue green markers. And I think both ways look incredible. We'll color in that wand and then our cute little mouse. I love using these E50s for our mice here. So I'm going to add some dark on the edges and then just blend it out into the light as if the sun is hitting his face, which I think looks so cute and sweet. I just love this little mouse and the fact that I have even more mice for this cute blowing bubbles theme. Now here's a look back at our letters. We have our more simple version at the very top, our stepped up version with the pinks and the purples for an iridescent look, our rainbow iridescence, just a cool colored in word, and now a rainbow colored in word. So there's so many options with this set and I think it's just so much fun. These are the coordinating dies for the set, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're going to take those dies and line them up with our letters and then hold them in place with some low tack tape and run it through the die cut machine. And I love seeing these letters all cut out and ready to put on a card. Once again, you can use them on their own or with those other little sentiments that are included in the stamp set. 
Here you can see our cute mouse in action. He can be blowing bubbles or he can be blowing out bubbles in the shape of these words. And I think that is so adorable. So he can kind of blow out the word happy or thanks, love, etc. And it looks so sweet on cards. The other product we're introducing today is our bubble stencil. And the stencil is really cool because it has these bubbles and it has shine marks. And it even has these little etched markings that help you line everything up. So we're going to go ahead and check this stencil out and see how it works. The first thing we're going to work with is this really cool bubble trail. So once I've decided where I want to put it on my piece of cardstock here, I'm just using some post-its to cover up the other bubbles. I'm kind of messy with my blender brushes and so I want to make sure I don't get ink where I don't want it. So I always like to cover things up with post-it notes. Then I'm going to take some kiddie pool ink on a blender brush or a foaming blending tool would work as well. And I'm just going to ink in those bubbles. And I'm not worried about them not being perfect because actually when some parts are darker and lighter, I think it looks really cool. Now, once I have those bubbles in place, I'm going to take my stencil and see those little etchings there? Those etchings are going to line up with that trail. So I could use the trail on its own or I can layer it with this other part of the trail. So I'm going to line up the etchings and that's going to give me a perfect layer where some of the bubbles are kind of going over top of each other and it's going to look really, really nice. I've taken some minty fresh ink here just for a slightly different color and there you can see how these little bubbles look layered on top of each other. And look how cute it looks with one of the mice from the Bubbles of Joy stamp set. I love seeing it as that little trail. So I wanted to create one more trail here. I'm starting with the other one there. It doesn't matter what order you do them in. You can do the bottom one first or the top one first. I did the bottom one first this time and now I'm going to layer over but I'm going to do a different color and I think this is really pretty especially with pinks and purples with the blue color. It's gorgeous and this is my favorite way to use it. And now here you can see how pretty that trail is and once again we're going to take our cute little Bubbles of Joy mice and look how sweet that is. So he's got this great little bubble trail coming out from his bubble wand. So it just gives you another option. Instead of using the stamp and die cuts, you could do your own stenciling. So we're going to start off here with one of the medium sized bubbles and I'm just inking on the edge of this bubble and going out towards the outside lighter to almost white because I want it to look like it's really, really kind of like glowing or there's kind of light coming off it at the top. So as I ink over it, I'm going to lift up my stencil and now you're going to see how pretty that bubble is. Um, so I just love that look and it's so quick and easy to do. Now for my next bubble, I'm going to ink it heavier on both kind of a left side and a right side, and that's going to give this a little bit of a different look. There's just no wrong way to do these bubbles, and you can see how nice that's looking already. But we're going to add a shine mark now, and you saw that there was that little etched guide again that we're going to line up with our bubble, and we're going to add the shine mark with our same color of kitty pool ink. So it's going to be very subtle, and now you can see what that bubble looks like. It's got kind of two harder edges and then the shine mark in it. So once again, you can play around and just have a ton of fun with these bubbles. Now I'm bringing in a different color. So I'm bringing in some fresh lavender, a nice light purple, and then my kitty pool ink. And I'm just going to have that fresh lavender color right on the outside. And I'm just going to bring a little bit more of that kitty pool up into that purple color. And then I can lift up my stencil. And once again, you can see how all of these different bubbles are starting to look. Now for this next bubble, I'm just going to use my kitty pool ink, but I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So I'm just going to kind of keep blending up this color. And as you can see on this stencil, there's lots of different sizes of bubbles. This helps you create cool scenes. You can layer them in fun ways. There's so many cool things that you can do with these guys. So now here you can see that largest bubble with just one color of ink. And now instead of doing the other color blended into it, we're going to use the other color for the shine mark. So I'm going to use that little etching that's on the stencil, line it up with my bubble. It's going to put my shine mark and perfect placement. I'm going to add my purple and now we've added that shine mark in a different way. So both ways look really great. Here is the smallest bubble in the set. So I added some purple and now I'm adding a little bit of blue and I'm really mixing the colors this time. And so this is a little bit more of a muddled look, but I think it looks pretty as well. And then for this guy, I'm just going to use the one color, kind of keeping it darker to the other end. And then we'll add a little shine mark on that more kind of muddled one because I wanted to add a little accent area on it. Next, we're inking up the kind of smaller medium bubble. This is the same bubble that's going to line up with the Bubbles of Joy bubble, and I'll be showing you that in just a little bit. Now for this next bubble version, I'm going to bring in both a purple and a pink, and this might be my favorite look. I really like when both the pink and purple are in there. So I'm going to bring in Ballet Slippers ink now and just ink that on the edge as well, and you can see how cool that looks. Now when I looked at it, I thought I wanted to add in a little bit more blue, although I did regret it later, but I was able to easily line up my stencil over it again and just add a little bit of blue on there. 
Now these bubbles don't need to be bubbles at all. They can just be cool circular accent pieces on your card. So in this case, I just took a bold green color. This is our celery stick ink color. And you can see you could fill in this whole circle and it could just be a really, really cool background too. So I love that they can be bubbles or cool backgrounds. The other thing that I like to do with these bubbles is overlap them. And this looks really cool as bubbles or also as kind of a cool accent background like we just talked about. So here's one bubble and I'm just gonna take one of a different size. You could do the same sizes as well and just slightly overlap them. And one thing I love is seeing the colors overlap because you're gonna have a slightly darker area. You could also have two overlap in two different colors and have the cool blend of those colors in the middle as well, which I think would be such a cool look on a card. I had so much fun creating those rainbow iridescent words that I thought it would be fun to play around with the idea of a rainbow iridescent bubble. So we're gonna be taking lots of different colors here and just blending the outside edges of this bubble with them. So we're going to be using ballet slippers, peach fuzz, butter, celery stick, kiddie pool and fresh lavender. I'm taking care to kind of slightly overlap each color but have a really light hand. I'm often kind of tapping my brush on my post-it notes before I bring them on to the stencil. And oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I could just do these all day. Speaking of iridescence, I thought it would be fun to bring some glitter into the mix here. So I'm gonna be using my little shine mark area. I'm gonna line that up with one of my bubbles. I'm gonna line up that etch line, and I'm actually gonna use some stickles. It was just what I had handy, and it's nice and quick and easy. So I'm gonna squirt some of the stickles onto my stencil, and I'm just gonna use my finger to smear it over that shine mark. So I'm just smearing it just like that, and then I can lift up my stencil, and look how pretty this is. Oh my gosh, like I feel like I should go back and add the shine mark to all of the bubbles. It's so cool. So I just took a little bit of that extra leftover stickles and I'm just going to put another shine mark on another bubble because it's looking so cool. The other thing that you could do is that you could smear the stickles or any kind of glitter gel that you might have over an entire bubble. So that's what we're going to do with this guy. I'm going to line up the bubble that I colored in. I'm going to line that stencil right back up and then just smear my glitter all over it. And this also looks really, really beautiful too. So it's a fun way to use this stencil. You could take out lots of different mediums and get super, super creative with it. So here's a look back at all of the bubbles that we worked on. We have our trails and all the different sizes of bubbles, the idea of just doing a solid circle that you can use as an element on the card or cool rainbow iridescent bubbles, so many fun things. And then I just wanted to go over again. I showed you guys this in the Bubbles of Joy video, but this is the large bubble stamped out from the Bubbles of Joy stamp set. Now, the cool thing about this bubble stencil is, is that the little me kind of smaller medium-sized bubble, it lines up perfectly with the stamped image. So it's a quick and easy easy way to color in the bubbles from your stamp set as well. So I love that you could use these on their own or you can use it with the stamp set too. And so this is a really quick and easy way, especially if you had a lot of bubbles to color in. You can use the similar techniques that we worked on today, like adding in pinks and purples or even doing a rainbow iridescent, but with the stamped image. Here's a quick look at a bunch of these bubbles all colored in with the stencil, and then a comparison against some Copic marker colored in bubbles. So both are awesome. It's just a little bit of a different look depending on what you're going for. So making those rainbow iridescent bubbles, it made me want to make more rainbow iridescent bubbles. So I just started playing around and I had so much fun doing this and I wanted to use these bubbles not as bubbles. So Shari is gonna do some incredible cards with this, showing you these guys with our awesome Bubbles of Joy stamp set and the scripty bubble sentiments. But I thought it would be fun to just create a cool graphic background with just a simple sentiment on it, a nice one layer card that's quick and easy. So I'm building up the colors here and I'm using those same ink pads that we did earlier. And so this is gonna be my focal point on my card and I'm gonna stamp one of the images from Magic Messages. The brand new Magic Messages stamp set fits perfectly onto that circle, which I think is so cool. Now for the rest of the card, what I'm gonna do is just take these bubbles and fill in the rest of the card with the same exact technique. So I'm just layering it over the edge, making sure that I have lots of bubbles going over the edge so it looks like one big, long, continuous pattern. And I'll be using the big bubble a lot, but I'll also be using the different sizes to help fill in my pattern. I love the idea of doing this in all sorts of different color palettes. And I think making a card like this is a really fun way to practice with this stencil too. So you could practice with all different colors and all different techniques all on one card and you would have a cool card at the end and you got to practice all these fun things. So that's kind of what I was doing here today. And I just had a blast. It was really fun to overlap them as well. I just think this turned out really cute and fun. 
To finish up my bubble practice card, I'm going to take out the brand new Perfectly Plaid Remix 6x6 pad and pick out one of the colors. A lot of these have kind of a rainbow look to them, so I thought this looked really cool uh, with it. So it's just fun to kind of mix and match these. And I'm going to trim that down to five and a half by four and a quarter and create a card base and layer all of these pieces. So once again, I love this bubble stencil because of course they're bubbles, but I love that they could also be a cool graphic element. And I'm going to think about other ways to add them to kind of some of my other card designs in the background. I think they'd be really, really pretty. Now Shari's going to take it away and create three beautiful cards using scripty bubble sentiments and the brand new bubble stencil. So for this card, I am going to use the scripty smile in the scripty bubble sentiment set and I am going to be white embossing it onto some vellum to make it really look like a bubble. So I've already colored and cut out my little mouse that I'm going to use on my card. And I'm just putting this scrap piece of vellum into my Misty. I added some anti-static powder to it and then I'm going to add my clear embossing ink to the stamp. And I'm actually going to stamp this twice and part of the reason why I use my Misty with vellum is because it's kind of slick. So this will help keep it in place with that magnet and the door that comes straight down. And I get a really nice impression. And then I'll just add my white embossing powder. You can see the word smile sort of appears when you add that powder. And then I'll just heat it up with my heat tool till it melts. You can see how it's getting much brighter white. And then I can use the coordinating dies that go with this stamp set and cut this out. So this really is going to look very much like a bubble with that white embossing on the vellum because we're going to be able to see the colors behind the vellum. So now for my card, I am going to be using a mermaid card base. You see that there? And then I'm also going to be creating some grass using some cilantro cardstock. So I'm using my grassy hillside border dies and I'm going to be cutting two layers of the grass. So this is going to be the one that is in the front, in the foreground of my card. I'm just going to hold it in place with some washi tape, and run it through my die cut machine, this piece is already cut to the same width as my card, so I don't have to worry about trimming it off. And then I'm going to lay that back onto this piece of cardstock so I can see where my hill lies so that I can line up the hill that's going to layer behind it. So I'll just hold that in place with some tape as well and run that through my die cut machine. And then I will have two grassy hills for my card. I am going to do a little bit of inking on the tops of the grass. So I'm using some Lucky Clover Distress Oxide and an ink blending tool just to add that darker green to the blades of grass towards the top. And then I sort of blend it back out to that cilantro cardstock. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the hill in the back. I'm not going to worry too much about getting that ink on that right side because it's going to be hidden. And I'm not pulling the ink down quite as far on that back hill so that I make sure I still see some of that cilantro cardstock color behind it. So you can see how those are going to kind of line up there. And then I'm going to take my images and sort of just place them where I want them to be because I'm going to be doing some stenciling directly onto the card base. I'm going to use the bubble stencil that has this trail of bubbles and if you can see it in the light, I'm trying to get the reflection, there's an etching in the stencil so that you can line up these two trails of bubbles together and you can create one trail with two different colors of ink. So that's why I already have that little smile on there because this is about where I want it to be because I want it to look like it's floating in this trail of bubbles. Like the little mouse is blowing some bubbles out of the wand and the sentiment is in those bubbles. So once I've got it where I want it, I'm going to hold it in place with some post-it note tape and you can see that I'm placing my tape over some of the openings of the stencil and this is just to protect my cardstock. Make sure I don't over blend past the little bubbles I'm trying to ink because sometimes I go past the edge and you can see the edge of the stencil is still there. I'm actually going to add a piece of post-it note tape to that as well so that I don't accidentally go past the edge and get a harsh edge on my card. So you'll see me do that here in just a minute. I'm going to be using two different colors of ink and I am starting out with my mermaid ink first. Just a light coating. This is where I realized 
I didn't put a piece of post-it note tape at the end. I'm going to protect that edge so that when I do that last little bubble, I don't accidentally let my brush go past the edge too much. And now I can pull that up and you can see where those bubbles are. I'm going to change over to some peacock ink. I did clean off my stencil and I'm going to use those little etched bubbles as a guide to line this up. So I know they're kind of hard to see right now as I line it up, but I'm going to pick this up and show you just what it looks like using the light from my desk lamp once I get this taped down. So you can see how the bubbles I inked before line up with those etched bubbles. See that one I'm pointing at right there? So that helps you make your little trail of bubbles. I'm going to be using a darker car or darker ink rather. I'm going to be using the peacock ink for this second set of bubbles, making sure I protect all those openings I don't want inked. And I'm just going to go over it pretty lightly. This is a darker ink, but I don't want it too terribly dark. And then once I pull that away, you can see the cute little trail of bubbles with two different colors of ink. I wanted to add a little bit more texture to my grass, so I'm just going in with some dark green watercolors and just flicking it off a block to add some splatters to the grass to add some texture. And then I'm also going to do the same to the card base. Now that my bubbles are stenciled, I'm going to add some splatters of white watercolor. Now that all those splatters are dry, I can add my hillsides to my card base. So this one is just going to go directly onto the card base. And then for the one in the front, I've added some foam tape so it's popped up a little bit off that background. And we have some dimension between the two. I'm going to add my little mouse. I've already put that bubble wand in his hand. And you can see he's blowing bubbles. You get that trail of bubbles. And you also get that vellum smile bubble. And to adhere this down since it's vellum, I'm just going to put teeny tiny dots of glue and I'm making sure I get those right behind the embossed line so that you don't see my glue when I glue this down. So they're just really tiny dots of glue and then I'm going to place this so that it looks like the word smile is coming out of his bubble wand. And then finally, for some final touches, I've got some puffy cloud frames cut from just white cardstock, and I'm just going to add those to the sky. These are some of my favorite things to add to little scenes because they fill it in, but because they're just the frames, they don't take away from anything too much. They're just very delicate and subtle. And I also like to make them go off the sides of the card like you see me doing here. And then I'll just trim off that extra. But it makes it look like the scene continues on past the card. So I'll just trim off what's hanging over the edge of the card with my scissors. And then to finish off the sentiment... I am stamping the words, you make me. This is also from that stamp set. I'm going to stamp these in peacock ink right above the word smile so that the sentiment says, you make me smile. And then I'm also adding some of those little pop stamps like the bubbles are popping. And I'm going to add this with some manatee ink. So it's just very light in that very light gray and just adds a little bit more to that background like the bubbles are popping. And then here is my finished card. So for this card, I'm actually remaking a card created by Elise. She made two simple cards using the scripty bubble sentiments in a repetitive way on the card with some nice plaid paper as the background. And I am recreating one of those. I'm using the happy sentiment. And I'm going to white emboss each of these onto a different color of cardstock. So I'm starting out with the lightest color that I have, and this is ballet slippers. And I've just already put my anti-static powder on my piece of cardstock. I'm going to stamp that with clear embossing ink. I'm going to add my white embossing powder. And then I'll just heat that up with my heat tool. 
So this is gonna melt and give you that nice bright white sentiment. So I'm gonna put that aside and then I'm gonna repeat the same process on each of the other colors of cardstock I have. So you can see I already put my anti-static powder. This one is guava cardstock. I've stamped that down with that clear embossing ink. I'm adding that white embossing powder and I'll just heat this up with my heat tool again till it's all melted and white. And then finally, the last one is embossed onto some raspberry cardstock. And since I'm using my Misty, I'm just stamping it twice so I make sure I have a nice coating of ink so that you can get a lot of that embossing powder and it's nice and thick. So now that I have all of these embossed, I can use the coordinating die that goes with this stamp set and die cut each of these happies out. So I'm just going to line that up with my image and hold it in place with a little bit of washi tape. And I'll do that with all three and run that through my die cut machine and you can see I have these fun, colorful, scripty bubble happies there. For the rest of the sentiment, I want it to say birthday to you. And so I'm doing the same thing on some black cardstock. And I've used the part of the sentiment that goes with that scripty happy from the stamp set. And you can see in the stamp set, it is actually kind of on a curve. And I just straightened that out when I stuck it to the door of my Misty. So that's just kind of the nice thing about clear stamps. You can kind of shape them differently if you like. And for the background of this card, I'm going to be using some of the perfectly plaid remix papers. You could use the 6x6. Six six. I'm actually going to cut my background from the 12x12 12 12, so it's a little bit bigger. And I use the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles. And that way I'll have a nice thin white border around my plaid when I put this on my card base. So now that my card base is ready, I can line up those happies. I'm going from the lightest at the top to the darkest at the bottom. And I'm starting with the one in the center. This is usually how I do things like this that are repetitive on a card. I like to start at the center and then work my way towards the top or bottom so that my spacing is always nice and perfect and I don't end up too close to the top or too close to the bottom. So now that I've got that center one on there, I'm just gonna do the same thing with the one at the top. And then of course, I'll repeat that same thing with the one at the bottom. And then now for the little black banner, it's gonna overlap these. And so I've kind of held it there so I can get my foam to go between the P's and the Y. And then I'm just gonna overlap that second happy with this little banner. And then finally to finish it off, I've cut some of the little tiny hearts from some guava cardstock and I'm just kind of placing those around where I want them. And once I have them where I want them, I'm going to take just a little dot of liquid glue and adhere them down in place. And then here is that finished card by Elise and I just think it is so adorable and really quick to make. So I'm gonna be making a slimline card using the bubble stencil. You can see I have all these sizes of bubbles and their little shine marks. And I'm gonna be making a rainbow of bubbles from the top of my card to the bottom. So here are all the colors that I plan on using. I'm gonna use two colors for every bubble. And I'm gonna start with the largest one first because this is where I'm gonna put my sentiment and then I'm gonna build out from this one. So I've taken a piece of post-it note tape. I'm just covering up the little shine mark and that's just so I don't accidentally go past that large bubble and hit that little shine mark and get any of that ink on my card base. And this is a piece of cardstock cut to eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. So it's just slightly smaller than a slimline card. This will give me a little bit of a border around this panel when I put it on my card base. And so I don't use a tons of post-it note tape. I'm just gonna protect my paper with some post-it notes. So I've got those edges protected and now I know that I can safely just ink my big bubble here and I'm gonna use Squeeze Lemonade towards the top and Twisted Citron towards the bottom. So like I said, I'm gonna be using two colors for every bubble. 
And I have planned these bubbles out on a piece of scrap paper before I started so that I knew where my colors went and where my bubble placement sort of went. So I'm just starting out with that squeeze lemonade towards the top, a very light layer. And then I'll go in with the Twisted Citron with a different blending brush for my green and pull that up towards the bottom right. Or from the bottom right, I should say. So the colors on each of these are kind of going to go diagonal. I've got my top color at the top left and my bottom color at the bottom right. And I'm just working my way back and forth between the two colors until I get this bubble looking the way I want. Now I don't want it too terribly dark because I want to add that shine mark. So each of these bubbles on this stencil, there is an etched line, which you can see when I get the glare from my lamp. And you can line that bubble up and then you get the shine mark that coordinates with that size bubble. So again, I'm going to protect my cardstock with some post-it note tape and some post-its and make sure that I only ink where that shine mark is. And for each of these, I'm going to be doing the shine mark with the darker of the two colors, so like my second color. So on this one, I'm going to go in with that Twisted Citron and just add my little shine mark. So I'm going to show you all these bubbles, but I'm going to speed up the process a little bit so that this video isn't too terribly long. I'm going in with the next bubble, and this one is going to go right above, and I'm going to overlap them so you can see how I've got the yellow overlap. I'm going to use Squeeze Lemonade and Dried Marigold for this one. So that Squeeze Lemonade is going to be my bottom color. And that dry marigold is going to be my top. Now these two overlap and you're not going to see the overlap too terribly much because squeeze lemonade happens to be the lightest color that I'm using. So the yellow on yellow doesn't show up too much. You can see it a little bit there but once it kind of dried and absorbed into the paper it was a little more subtle. I'm going to line up my shine mark and on this one I actually am going to use the orange so it'll show up. And then there's that second bubble done. Now I'm going to do one towards the top. So for this one, I am using worn lipstick and dried marigold. And there are four sizes of bubbles on this stencil. So you have a lot of variety to make the bubbles flow across your card. I'm going to go in with that worn lipstick for my little shine mark there. And then now I can work my way towards the bottom, building off that big bubble that I started with. I'm going to do the next one down with Twisted Citron, which was one of the colors on that big bubble, and Lucky Clover. So you're going to see the overlap of this one a little bit more with the green than you did with the yellow. But of course, these are bubbles and they're supposed to look transparent. So I like that that overlap is very subtle when you add the ink blending over top of it. And you can see all four sizes I have on my card right now. So you can kind of see their comparison and the look you get by layering all those different size bubbles together. Now I'm going to go to the bottom, so I'm kind of skipping a bubble here. I'm skipping around, and this is just because I'm working on the placement. I don't want it, these to end up too close to the bottom, so I'm going to do those first. This one is going to be peacock feathers towards the top with salty ocean towards the bottom. So I've got a teal and then a more true blue. And I'm going to add that little shine mark with that salty ocean ink. And then I'm going to add the next one between those two. So since I've got that one towards the bottom, I know where my placement is for this one that goes in between. 
This one is going to be the next to largest bubble. This one's going to have a little mouse in it once I get it done. So I'm going in with Lucky Clover towards the top and then the peacock feathers towards the bottom. And then finally, I'm going to add one more little bubble towards the bottom after I get this shine mark on here. And it is going to be that salty ocean. It's going to overlap the two blues there and wilted violet. You're really going to see the overlap on this one with that blue color because it's really bright. And then for the shine mark on this one, I'm going to use the wilted violet. So you have just a little bit more of the purple because there's not a lot of the purple on this card since it is a very small bubble at the bottom. And then there are all my bubbles. Now to kind of fill in the background, I'm going to use the bubble trail. I'm not going to use it um, layering the two together. I'm just going to use the circles just as they are. And I'm going to use tumble glass, which is a very, very light blue. And I'm just very lightly going across these. I want these to look like they're a very subtle background and not take away from my brightly colored bubbles. So as you can see, I'm just going to shift these around until I get those very small circles sort of where I want them. You can see on this one I actually covered one of them up because I didn't want it to overlap that purple bubble too much. And I'm just using these as filler. I'm making them go off the top of the card here. So that looks like these bubbles fill the scene and just float off to the sides. I am letting a few of these overlap my big bubbles. You can see on this one, I am going to do one of those blue bubbles to overlap onto the yellow one. And I'm just turning my stencil around so that the formation doesn't look the same and doesn't look repetitive between each of these trails. So now I've got all those background bubbles the way I want them and it fills in that white quite nicely but does not detract from these rainbow bubbles at all. For my sentiment, I'm using one of the new Magic Messages sentiments. I like this one that says, I'm lucky to have a friend like you. And it fits perfectly and all these will fit perfectly in this largest bubble. So I'm just picking that up with my Misty Door and I'm gonna stamp this down with a nice crisp black ink. So for my little mice, for this particular card, I'm gonna fussy cut them out. I'm not gonna use the coordinating dies. So I wanna stamp them onto my card base where I want them to be, and that's so that their tails will be stamped onto the background and I don't have to worry about cutting around their tails. And part of the reason I am fussy cutting them is I just think that it will make them look like they're in the bubbles more without that white edge. It's just the look that I'm going for on this particular card. So I've colored all my little mice here, just using various colors of grays and browns. And I'm just adding a little bit of pink to their ears and their noses. And then I'm just gonna cut around them right on that line. And because I stamped those images onto my card, I do not have to worry about their little tails. I can just cut those right off. And when I layer these images on top of the images I've stamped, the tail will be there. And then I like to go around the edges with a black marker so you don't see the edge of the white paper once they're cut out. So you can see how that's gonna look sitting there. I'm gonna do the same to my other two images. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this onto a card base. I have a mermaid cardstock card base here. And you can see how you get that little border around it because this is slightly smaller than the card base. And I've also stamped out the little heart from the set. So all these mice and the heart are from the Bubbles of Joy stamp set. 
and I'm just adding some liquid glue. I know exactly where my glue needs to go because I've stamped my mice down on the background. And then I can just add all these little images. I didn't really need to stamp the heart, but I just did it anyways, just for consistency. But you can see when I add my little mice, that that tail is there and it just looks like that mouse is just perfectly inside that bubble. I really like this little guy running. I imagine him doing flip flops in that bubble. And then I really like this one that sits on top of the bubble. He may be my favorite. And then of course, because it's bubbles and I wanted to add a little bit of glitter, I'm adding some stardust stickles. I'm just adding these to some of the background bubbles. And then I'm going in with some iridescent bubbles from Studio Cadia and adding a couple of those as well. These are perfect to use on all these bubble cards. And here is my finished card. I love those rainbow bubbles so much. It's so much fun to stencil these. Thank you so much for creating these beautiful cards, Shari. I love your bubble trail with that scripty word. Using those scripty words on a completely non-bubble card, and of course those rainbow bubbles on the slimline card are so incredible. Next up, we have some amazing cards by the design team. And first up, we have this super cute card by Jen. I love that she has her mouse in a pink cloudy sky. Here's a quick little card having our little mice floating around in those stenciled bubbles. I think those are just so cute and adorable. This card by Lynette is so cool. I love that she used the scripty happy on a birthday card, not bubble related at all. And here, this card by Megan. Oh my gosh, those rainbow bubbles. How beautiful are they? I am in love with those little bears blowing the bubbles too. I love that other critters can blow bubbles with those wands as well. I love Jen's watercolor look with the Scripty Bubble Sentiment Stamp Set. It's such a perfect look and heat embossing and water and coloring is a great way to use this stamp set. And here Audrey got super creative and she used the new bubble stencil as gumballs. Oh my gosh, how fun is that? This card by Lynette is so cute and I love that she's got her awesome greeting there in a green cardstock with white heat embossing. And then here Shari has our little mouse blowing out hearts instead of bubbles which I think is such a sweet idea especially with that love sentiment. Here Elena has our cute little elfie selfie elephant blowing bubbles as well and he's blowing out the word smile from the scripty bubble sentiment stamp set. These are Elise's cards that inspired us to do the card today, and I love that she's heat embossed on white on different shades of colored cardstock. This is a great way to meet quick and easy cards and even use up those scraps that you might have, and it looks adorable with the new perfectly plaid papers. We have this gorgeous card by Tammy, and I love how she colored her bubbles in such a bold way, and she has that sweet little mouse blowing out the word smile. I think it looks adorable and so fun. And then this card by Grace uses the brand new interactive swish and pop die with a new guy called Ladybug and Leaf that we're going to be showing you later. And I love that she colored in her words as if they were ladybugs. It's such a cute way to use these bold sentiments. And then here, this card by Letitia is so cute and sweet. I love that it's clean and simple, but bold at the same time. So wonderful. And I cannot wait to see what you guys do with these new stamp sets and stencils. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.